Hi, this is Ansgar from Human Codable, and today I want to go over the second chapter of my advanced VR framework, the VR controllers. Um, so when I'm talking about the VR controllers, I actually mean the motion controller, and Steam being the HTC Vive VR controller, or with Oculus, the Oculus Touch controllers. Um, so the, the controller obviously has a visual representation, and they have some kind of functionality. And I just want to explain how this functionality is built up, how the controllers are built up, how the VR phone uh, interacts with the controllers, and generally how it does uh, all of this work. Um, so let's go in the VR preview, and then I can show you the controllers and their functionality, how it should look in, in the game. Um, the VR controllers are actually very easy to show. It's the, the touch controllers that you have right here in your hand. Currently, I have the one laser mode activated, and if I press on this game's right start button here, I can switch between my VR hands, which uh, allows these gestures, and I can switch between the two laser mode and the one laser mode. Um, the, the laser, for example, is able to, to grab objects and move them around. It's also able to, to select objects. Um, if I press on this button right here, I can uh, use it to fly around a bit. Very, very trivial movement type. If I press on, on the other button right here, I can use it to, to teleport around. If I, I press the upper button right here, I can uh, teleport. Uh, no, I can, I can have the radio menu open and the radio menu spawns these radio menu buttons. And I can close it again and I can open it again, just, just as I wish. Um, basically, all these functionality also work with um, with the VR hand, so I can use it to open it, close it, select elements. Um, I can also fly around, and also with a teleporter, I can use these. And um, there we have it. Basically, with these VR controllers, we can do a lot of things, and um, the the flexibility of them is, is very vast. And now I want to show you how it is actually implemented. The way the setup with the VR controllers work is that we have the VR pawn, which spawns uh, a motion controller for the left hand and motion controller for the right hand. And each motion controller uh, basically contains a lot of modular components. For example, in, with the hand, the VR hand, the teleporter, but also the radio menu or maybe a movement component, any kind. Um, and in the example of the controller, it has also a controller, but it also has a laser pointer as a, a modular component, or uh, as similar to uh, the VR hand also has a teleporter. So basically, the setup makes it very, very flexible and uh, very uh, modular to, to just uh, stick together do, uh, uh, separate components on one motion controller. And it makes it very easy to uh, turn on and off as separate features. Um, uh, one a very important thing to notice is that all key, uh, key inputs land with on the VR controller, and they're being passed uh, down to the motion controller, and the motion controller decides uh, which modular component currently uh, should receive the, the key inputs. Um, it's probably easiest to see in code, so I will go right in there. So to understand this further, let's go in the framework on VR. Um, so the VR pawn basically uh, only has three sections, which um, the first section being the setup section, where it uh, set up the tracking sizes and uh, the, the, the tracking heights and the player size, and uh, basically spawns the VR controllers. And for the rest of the elements, the only thing it does is forward key inputs to the VR controllers. Um, I know for the trigger it looks a bit bit strange, but this is an alternative grip which allows the player to to hold the uh, trigger button to execute a grip. This is especially useful when having a, fo a one finger mode, so uh, being able to to go around in VR and only using the trigger button to do so, and to be able to pick up objects only using the trigger button. And uh, here we see that the thumbsticks are also being forwarded to the uh, left and right VR controller. Um, and that is basically it. Everything else is just keyboard uh, key input forwards. 
And uh, yeah, to fu further understand that, let's go over to the motion controller. We find the motion controllers in blueprints, VR pawn motion controllers. So there we have three different motion controllers. The ones we already saw, the double laser, single laser, and the VR hands. Um, so let's go in the single laser mode. Um, here we see that we basically, yeah, we, we also have a setup and we have our three components, the teleporter component, the controller mesh component, and the laser component. Um, uh, notice that we don't have a radio menu component. So the radio menu component is uh, created uh, during runtime and uh, is also always being destroyed during runtime. Um, so the setup mesh controller, uh, the setup section is very important, which basically um, assigns all the essential variables and allows the um, component to be uh, to be initiated. So when when we go further for to the VR hands, we notice that there is even even less. Um, we have the hand component and the teleporter component. Remember the radio menu component is constructed during runtime um, through through these functions, and um, then we have the base motion controller, which uh, which handles all the uh, key uh, key inputs and forwards them to the um, respective um, uh, modular component. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's, let me go over the, each and every one of the modular components as good as I can, because there is actually the, the, the whole functionality that is necessary. So to find the motion components or modular components, we have to go in blueprints, VR motion components, and there we find the five motion components. Um, see that we don't have a motion component for the movement. Um, that is because I implemented the movement component on the motion controller itself, which is not very consistent. And I'm definitely going to cha change that in future upgrades when I uh, make the motion component, uh, the movement motion component more complex and being implemented to, to walk around or to, to have better flight and better feeling and collision and all that good stuff. So the first one I want to go in is the controller which is very, very simple. It just has, has a, a mesh of a, uh, the, the motion controller. It doesn't do anything else. Just on setup, it's going to change the motion controller depending on the HMD that you're actually on. So if you're on, on Steam, it's going to change to a Steam controller. If you're on uh, Oculus, it's going to stay the Oculus Rift controller. And that is basically it for that thing. So keep in mind that uh, Modular components can also be very, very simple, um, but they can also be complex, as such as the VR hands. The second modular component are the VR hands. So if we go in them, we can also already see that it's much more complex. Um, we have the possibility to select objects with with pointing our uh, pointing finger at them. So if we have, uh, if we point at objects and do like this tapping motion on it. It automatically selects um, the uh, the object, and uh, the VR hands also have the ability to grab objects. Um, keep in mind that uh, we can grab objects to uh, from higher distances, and they will automatically try to snap to our hands fluently. Um, it's very uh, very important to keep in mind that uh, we also have the ability to grab objects and let them snap on certain sockets. I think this is best shown if we um, have a certain mesh. Um, for example, one of the object meshes that works quite well on is, is the mug. Um, there we see that we have um, sockets applied to, to where the hand is supposed to be uh, lashing onto. Um, these, are uh, these sockets are very important uh, because without them, uh, the VR hand wouldn't have any idea where it should position itself and which uh, gesture it should have. So uh, all the information on that is actually in the name itself. So what it looks for, uh, what the left hand, for example, is looking for, for all tags, which are uh, called L underscore something. 
and uh, the gesture is uh, defined in the in the following number so for example the second gesture is a pinch a gesture which which has um, this kind of uh, hand gesture towards it so we have a mesh for each of the each of the different hand gestures and these can then be applied to to easily um, define the positions the, the hand should lock onto. So this is a very, very beautiful way to um, make the object snap uh, to, to where they should without having to make very stupid pivots of the, of the mesh itself. So uh, yeah, I found this to be very, very useful. Um, going back to the hand, uh, we, we see that we have further functionality, grab release and um, what happens if we, if we actually press the trigger, what happens if we release the trigger. And uh, we also have uh, some cap motions, which are forwarded to um, the animation blueprint of the hand, um, which basically allows to show whether we are actually touching the, um, uh, the, the trigger button or we're touching the um, uh, thumbstick. And there we come to the last uh, feature of the hand, which is the animation blueprint, um, which basically comes from the Oculus library and is a very beautiful animation blueprint, uh, which allows tons of different hand gestures to um, to uh, yeah to be in place and a lot of different motions um, with uh, fully utilizing the the Oculus Touch controller. The next ability that I want to go over is a pointer. So the pointer is basically a laser pointer that enables the controllers to interact with the world around them. Um, it is able to, to select objects, it is able to, to hover over them and highlight them and uh, to, to show how it would uh, interact with them. And uh, it also has the ability to grab objects, which allows the object to be attached to to the laser itself and uh, then to be turned or to be moved and uh, to to be controlled additionally um, the the laser is spline based meaning it will try to uh, always be a smooth laser and uh, on movement it will try to interpolate to uh, the position to to where you're actually pointing so it uh, has this nice and feel, uh, nice and smooth uh, look to it. Um, so to to go in every detail of this um, modular component would be a bit too much, but it's actually really easy to to just dive into uh, what elements and how these uh, elements uh, work together, and um, what each and every element actually does. So uh, yeah, let's go over to the next component. The next modular component is a radio menu. And when we go in there, the only thing it basically does, it um, it spawns the radio menu buttons uh, that are defined in the experience object. Um, we, we can take a short look at the experience object, for example, for the showcase level. And um, there we can see that uh, we currently have these radio menu buttons that should be spawned. Um, so going back to the m uh, radio menu modular component, this is what it actually does. It spawns the, uh, the buttons and it has these little beautiful animations toward them. So they arrange around them and um, the button, uh, the radio menu button itself actually spawns the palette menu. And uh, that is basically it. The only th additional thing it does, it uh, use this as a thumbstick input so when you press a thumbstick in any direction it has this little arrow that uh, points to the radio menu and where, whichever radio menu you currently have selected is the one that um, is, is being uh, triggered on press. Okay um, so let's go to the last uh, modular component. So the last modular component is a teleport component and basically the teleport component is just a, a different spline based laser similar to the pointer component that has uh, some additional functionality on activation and deactivation which basically says that the character should be teleported there 
but besides that, it's just an animated laser, just like the pointer component. I want to close off this chapter here. I hope you got a good understanding how the modular components are interacting with the uh, uh, motion controllers, how the motion controllers are being spawned by the VR pawn. And uh, I also hope that you see the power of the setup, being, it being very, very modular and uh, very easy to implement. So each time a new feature uh, should be implemented to the um, motion controller, it's very easy to just uh, design um, a modular component uh, by the template and have it implement this functionality. The only struggle that you always have is uh, adjusting the key binds because you always have very, very limited keys and uh, often you, you want one key to have multiple functionalities. Um, but with a bit of playing around, you always find a good solution for that. And uh, yeah, I want to close, uh, close this off here and thank you for, for listening and see you next time.